Chicago, Illinois, and works full time to empower women everywhere. We will then go through some stories of media B roll time. That means the stories that happened while we were on billboards, in the magazines, and on the TV shows. We, we will then conclude with some tools and resources how we can kind of start to change this conversation and change our environment while we're here on your campus. And we'll also have a question and comment and answer time at the end as well. So if you have any great questions or comments about what you hear today or about the campaign in general, we will address those then. I was going to school full time. I was working part time. I was president of a business fraternity on my campus. I was volunteering at a women's shelter across the street from my campus. And I was a resident advisor. I was busy. You're going to be able to relate to this now, and you'll continue to relate to this through your life. You kind of know how everything works. So I convinced my best friend and my roommate to go with me to the salon. So we leave our apartment, and we are walking the three blocks it takes to get from our apartment to the salon. And as we're walking, we're chatting, and I realize this woman's trailing super close behind me. And she's walking very close, and she keeps taking notes, and she's checking me out, and she's writing things in a notebook. And I keep thinking, who is this lady who's following me and watching me and taking notes? So I blow it off. I walk into the salon. I sit down. I sit behind the desk. I introduce myself to all of the clients in the, in the waiting room. The woman walks right up to me. She had followed me inside. She holds out her hands and says, hi, I'm Lydia. I'm a talent agent. And I was watching you walk down the street. I would love for you to come to a modeling audition. I look back at her and I said, pardon? Ma'am, what about me is screaming model to you? And she said, no, you don't understand. This is different. This is about real beauty, real women, curves, everything. I was watching you walk down the street. You walk with a lot of confidence. You have your shoulders back. You were giggling. You were laughing with your friends. You're curvy. You're different than the normal model. I think you'd be perfect for this campaign. I thank her for the flattering comment, but I say absolutely no way, no how. Walk into the back of the salon. Almost 30 years since I've been in this room, um, which is a long time. And, and obviously things have changed quite a bit around this campus. Um, when I was here, you know, we didn't have baseball, no baseball field, no baseball team, no swimming, no lacrosse. There's a lot we didn't have. There's a lot of new buildings here as well. I, I write music for orchestras and for pianists and for ensembles and choirs. Um, and, uh, you know, just about anybody who wants to play. And, and I guess the style I write is uh, contemporary classical music, So, um, which is a little bit of a strange animal because it is classical music, you know, you know the violins and things, but it's not going to sound like Mozart, if you know what Mozart sounds like. So I thought maybe the best way to kind of give you a rough idea of what I do is, is to play a little example of my music. So this was at the Gilliard Auditorium uh, just about a year ago, almost exactly a year ago.
In short, they have better stuff than I do. That there isn't one of them who is any happier than I am. Not one of them. In fact, sadly, I think there are a few of them that aren't happy at all. So let me just tell you about my job, what my job is like. My job has two basic facets. One is teaching, the other is composition. So let's talk about teaching first. I teach, my degree is in music theory and composition. I'm a professor of music theory and composition. Music theory is sort of the nuts and bolts of music, right? How, how harmony works, how melody works, how to analyze scores, and all those sorts of things. And I think this is really an important point. Because I know that y'all are all a, a real smart group of guys. And some of you are going to go on to do great things. I'm, I'm sure. So. But leading with humility is not often, not always, an easy thing. And I, no matter how good I might think I am, or how good somebody might tell me that I am on any of this stuff, there's always going to be somebody who's better than you. Always. No matter what you do. I'm not sure there's a guy right behind you that's going to do it even better. So if your entire your meaning of life is being absolutely the best at everything and that's it and God of your own world, you better be careful because there's somebody right on your heels who's probably going to do it better. And I think your credibility as a leader is much greater when you overtly uh, act out of a position of humility as opposed to knowing everything. A gentleman who writes for the Chicago Sun-Times loved this campaign. He thought it was great. He hopes a lot of women get encouragement and empowerment from it. To my special favorite, Stacy Mado. Stacy, I love my job. But every morning that alarm goes off and it's so hard for me to get out of bed, so I'm hitting snooze three or four times at least. I get up, I get ready, I run down the bus stop, I sit down on that bench next to you, I look up at your picture, and all I can imagine you saying to me is, good morning. <laughs> Check out my fine good dog and dog. <laughs> yeah, he wrote my dog and dog in the newspaper. Typically a pretty reputable place to get information, right? A few weeks later, I had a similar phone call. Stacy, are you sitting down? Yes, have you read the Chicago Sun Times? No, she said, you better sit down, I have something to tell you. Another gentleman who writes for the Sun Times did not like the campaign. In fact, he hated it. He called the six of us fat, ugly, and unattractive. Embarrassments to advertising. He said if he ever saw one of us out in a social situation like a restaurant or a party, he wouldn't just walk, he'd sprint the other way. We were disgusting. We should be ashamed of what we've done. Skip to the last paragraph, lucky me, I got special attention again. To my least favorite Stacy Nato, the next time I want to see thighs that big is in my KFC chicken bucket for dinner. I'd be lying if I told you that didn't hurt. I think we often think about people in the media and expect them to wear some special armor to protect them from mean comments. Or maybe we think that people in the media deserve it because they put themselves there. And maybe I'm telling you this story to let you know that I know exactly what it feels like to get attacked. So my publicist said, all right, Stacey, we'll do whatever you think is right. We'll hold a press conference, we'll write a note, we'll stay silent, whatever you want. He said, you know what, I'm not sure. Give me a few days. I'll think about it. So three days later, my publicist calls, yet again, Stacey, have you read the Sun-Times? No, are you sitting down? Yes, but I'm getting very sick of this game. What do you want? He said, you know what, I'm not even going to tell you. You go down to the newsstand and you pick up a paper yourself. A public apology had been written to the six dog girls and to women everywhere. Thousands of people flooded his snail mail, email, and voicemail, telling him exactly what they thought of him. And I had done my job. Because people were sort of sticking up for me. Yeah, there were a few comments. But more importantly, us ladies stood up and took a stand for ourselves. We stood up for ourselves, we used our voice, and we spoke up. One woman wrote, who do you think you are? She looks like me. She looks like my best friend. 
and my aunt, my mother, my grandma. We are strong, confident, beautiful women who are no longer going to listen to your opinion. Because we have that power. We have the power to stand up for what we believe in and use our voice. We have the power to use our voice and demand change. We have the power to use our voice and get respected and loved as we should. Don't you ever forget that. Whatever makes you tick, whatever makes you feel passionate, body image, politics, I don't care. Whatever it is, stand up for what you believe in and use your 